<laughs> like to call the Building Facilities Construction Committee meeting of Wednesday, September 20th, 2023 at 10 a.m. It's supposed to be, but what do we got over there? 10.05 um, to order and uh, just go around the table, give your name. And so for the recorder, Linda? Linda Brown. Ray McFox. Bob Wormy. Fred Fontaine. And, and Shirley Mazinski chair, and we have uh, Matt Benoit uh, and Matt Wojcik with us, the uh, administrator. So the first item on the agenda is our um, meeting schedule. We've got to get this squared away for Jen. Um, take a look at the schedule, and there is one situation where June, which is in the th and the usual meeting is June, the third Wednesday, would be 619, which is Juneteenth, a holiday. Other options would be the week before, uh, which would be June 12th, or the week after, 626. I would vote for 612. Second. Anybody have any problems? Okay, motion was made by Ray and seconded by Linda to have the meeting for June on the 12th of June. And um, we'll see, we usually meet at four in the afternoon, but we are trying out 10 a.m. We'll see how this meeting goes. <laughs> all right, any questions, comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted, thank you everybody. Um, next item is the assignment, uh, Board of Selectmen assignment regarding the uh, highway uh, public safety and our highway building projects. If we could get an update on that, please. I don't know, sometimes I lose track of what I've said to you. So if I'm repeating myself, wave your hands or do something. Um, we're going to push this vote on the plan to May town meeting. The November town meeting, while still feasible, doesn't give, uh, from the design point of view, does not give us enough time as a staff and as a group of boards to educate our members and get the word out to the public. We would like to have consensus and not try to rush something through, especially since it involves, it will involve a borrowing. So we will still probably have a lot to show people by November 6th, which is fall town meeting. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking what we might do is use either the room where town meeting will occur or a nearby room to put up conceptual drawings and have handouts and for interest, interested taxpayers do a briefing. This is where the project is starting to come together, we've identified location, we've identified building elevations. And um, start that process of educating people. We will either do a special in the late winter or early spring or we will wait till May. Um, I would still like to have a special. I think having a special in the March time frame would mean that people who really care about the issue who wanted to engage in it would have the opportunity to come and discuss nothing else but that and not get into all the housekeeping that a, a town meeting usually involves, including the budget. <clears throat> um, we have many steps to follow mm -hmm. to get this project done. So we were probably going to be negotiating with the owner of some real estate and going through the process under Chapter 40B for arriving at a price for that real estate. Only town meeting can purchase an interest in real estate in Massachusetts. So we would have to bring that um, to Douglas Town Meeting. That's why we need a special, because we would probably have to have more than one vote on the same topic. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> as far as the drawings go, they've progressed very quickly. And we, if we have a budget estimate, I don't think we feel comfortable sharing the budget estimate because we feel that it's quite high and that we'll be knocking that down quite a bit as a, internally in our discussion. 
We have select board members and members, you know, John Furno and Adam Furno and others. We're going to go through their conceptual design very carefully and eliminate some things I think that are going to be too. They just they put in there because they want us to have the option mm -hmm. of eliminating them. But um, you know, the design is very simple. It's a highway barn, right? It's a box with you know substantial amount of storage inside that's minimally managed in terms of climate control and all the rest of it. It doesn't need to be grand. It just needs to be a dry place where we don't have temperatures either plummet or soar to unmanageable levels. And then outside the anticipation is that we would do quite a bit of uh, just a, a roof overhang storage for things that can sit outside and it won't be hurt by the weather uh, rather than building it all out as interior space. The intriguing thing about the concept is that uh, the recommendation is that we build new behind uh, the existing facility so that the existing facility would continue to operate at its current capacity and continue to serve the town until the new one is ready and then we would do the demo after. So the proposal that will come to the town will be for both the building of a new building and the demolition of an old one. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I'm intrigued. I think we're finally going to get environmentally compliant storage of our salt and fuel and the concept is for a fuel a managed fuel depot with all the necessary environmental safeguards for our entire fleet though uh, there are going to be some things that we can't electrify <laughs> we just signed up for a study um, you know realistically you know graders front end loaders sidewalk tractors you know these things are going to be run on diesel and I can get mass deliveries of diesel through the statewide contract at ridiculously low prices compared to what we pay even now with the with our we don't pay wholesale we pay like halfway in between wholesale and retail if that makes sense uh, we get all the federal taxes waived but we still pay the state taxes under our current arrangement but quantity is the name of the game and the town doesn't buy enough heating fuel as a municipality. We would if we had the schools, but they have their own contract. So it's just our little buildings. We don't buy enough to get major volume breaks. But we would if we had included vehicles and generators and everything else. Um, so. I have a question. Linda? So the, the diesel would be an underground store? No, no. Oh, okay. That's no such thing anymore. Oh. No, so it, almost all of the expense now has got nothing to do with the tank. And it has everything to do with the environmental controls around it. Hmm. So you built, you put them on top of a reservoir that would capture the full capacity of the tank. Kind of like what Socia's has down there, all enclosed with uh, a cement type there above ground tank for their home heating oil. I mean, it would, I would think you'd have to have like a it's pad. Just, and it's, the, it's, it's the basis of your comparison. We would do something like Socia, mm. but not quite what he's done. Okay. But that's a general con conceptually, you are correct. It would have some of those elements. Because I know the aquifer is right there. Yeah. Right. But we'd have to be fully compliant with yeah. them. Within Thank the zone. You. Okay. Are they, were they also okay. um, going to be a, a constructual concept of combining all these, or just individually, just going to be the highway barn? Could that be expanded to do the fire department or the police department, or in a one facility, or? It's a little bit of a blend. So we would want the storage facility to be large enough to include fire equipment and other departments equipment that needs to be stored so we could get it out of where it is now. Mm -hmm. So some of the traffic jam you saw specifically at the fire station, we would try to alleviate that. We would try to move the more sensitive items out of Cottage Street so that we weren't at risk. Because Cottage Street is kind of sketchy. Mm -hmm. um, but in terms of <clears throat> whether we have the space and whether or not highway plays nice with the other departments, I think we've kind of turned the corner on that question. Uh, police and fire can share a facility mm -hmm. and that they have, along with EMS, and they have a number of potential opportunities to consolidate some assets. Highway just doesn't work that way. It's not, it's not a marriage you see in very many communities. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Questions? Uh, Fred? Pu pushing, I think pushing it off is a good idea, obviously. 
My only concern is some of the safety things that I saw over there. Is some of that being addressed in the meantime? Because it's going to be quite a while before we break ground. Well, that's a good question. I mean, we we already do a, lo a number of things to try to safeguard people. Um, we store a lot outside that we would rather not. And, um, you know, obviously we have the office trailer there to move the staff out of the facility. So that's that's 90% of our concern uh, in terms of whether the building holds up or not. We're still up this long. Okay. <laughs> you know, We'll burn some sage, we'll sacrifice a small goat, we'll do whatever we need to do. <laughs> Peter's gonna have a field day now. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you also, anything new that's being built, are you also looking at solar to get as much as we can? Yeah, so that's part of what we asked for in the design, would be as much solar as the roof can safely handle. Um, I think that they were, they being Weston and Samson, yeah. have always defaulted to having that power, uh, I don't know if you would call it behind the meter or in front of the meter, I forget what, how it works, but connected to the grid. And we wouldn't want to do that. We would want battery supply. So we'd be our own off taker right on the site. Um, <clears throat> to me, that's the ultimate ideal situation. If the grid goes down, we would have some combination of backup generator mm -hmm. that would be powered off the diesel at the fuel depot and, you know, solar battery backup. And obviously, we would default using the energy from the solar first and then kick the generator on if it was needed. But <clears throat> the highway has to run. Mm -hmm. you know, so no matter how bad the storm is, we need our highway department to run. Um, right. So that might add... A little bit, but not much. I mean, the real cost here is actually not even the building itself. The cost is some of the interior fit out and then running the utilities back to the, the site and general site prep. So that will be a sensitive issue in our, if the select board takes this recommendation and decides to run with it, they would negotiate and there may be some demo that the land order can do before the property was sold to us at private rates instead of prevailing wage. Uh, it's just, it's so prohibitive to do some of this stuff at prevailing wage. Just it, mm -hmm. to fly in the ointment. Uh, but that's kind of where we're at. So that's why I'm not sharing the number. I think we have sure. some work we can do. So, um putting this off to either a special or a Maytown meeting, that was the decision of the Board of Selectmen? Or your yeah. recommendation? Our, that's our interior, our internal consensus. Now I've got so one or two select board members on this in working group. Um, Would that be something that you could vote on at the November? So the warrant just got opened last night. Um, there's a placeholder on there. I think we'll take it off. We'll, so we'll have a recorded vote of the selectmen. But okay. So um, when does the warrant close? October third. Okay. We opened it last night. It will be populated between now and the third, and it will close on the third. And I don't think you know. In years past. Yeah. It's slightly off your agenda, but it's public business anyway. In years past, we would take things at the last minute if they were available. Uh, we're not. We're not going to do that anymore. Okay. We want. We want to settle the warrant and educate finance committee and the community and not have these last minute run ups. Okay. And just, when is the town meeting going to be? November sixth. Yeah, you know, the moderator had a conflict, and then we had student uh, parent teacher night or something that the schools do every year, and yeah, there's just too much sure to plan around. Okay, anybody? I, yeah, yeah, Linda. We're thinking about maybe setting up a different room at town meeting in November to view these things. I recommend putting them out in the hallway. Yeah, at, because. People aren't going to go a separate place, you know. When they walk by, they get into the building, the school. They're going to say, "Oh my God, what's this?" You know. But it, you know, if you go to the future, 
Yeah, what I would hope to do is, since we use the auditorium at the high school, we use the cafeteria for... And we have done speak, that. To, to speak to it. We have done that in I the I agree past. with putting signs out in the hallway. Yeah. This way to the egress, right? Yeah. But there would have to be a separate <laughs> time for people to go in there so that they don't miss right. town meeting. But people that come late, they get there at one minute to seven, they're not going to have the opportunity. Yeah, we're just moving you know? stuff out. Okay. Anything else on that issue? Good. All right, we'll move on to, again, status of the oil spill. So I'll, I'll make quick work of your agenda. I'll yeah. Just, from a, we really have updates for you on D and F. Nothing else has changed on the others. Uh, D and F, is, well, I have a question on D. Okay. So tell me about the oil spill. Nothing new. So we're still in limbo. Yeah, the lab is still analyzing the results. So that I wrote down test was taken for air quality yeah. yesterday, I wrote, which was before our last meeting. So no results from that? Okay. And item B, green communities, you're looking at grants. Grant, uh, we don't have a response for the award yet. We submitted several months ago. I usually expect a response September, October, so maybe by our next meeting we could have an answer. Okay. Municipal backup generators. On green communities, let me just emphasize, let me just yep. flag something. This is for future reference. The green communities assessment, so we went with a new consultant this year, and they went through looking at our project list and tweaking it and adding some things. They identified the age of the transformers at the school campus as an issue. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my position doesn't matter. I don't make decisions. But I'll tell you that in terms of recommendations that I can make, it's non-negotiable. We, we've, we've got to address the age of the transformers at the school. You can't run a school department in four buildings with no power. Mm -hmm. And those things are, what, 23 years old? Yeah, they were just under the threshold that made them eligible for funding. So yeah, so the, the new generation of transformers does not improve the efficiency of the equipment to the point where it qualifies as a green communities project. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean that we can sit tight with the transformers we have. Right. They are, they're just, they're really old. Um, they carry a pretty heavy load. Schools are pretty busy. Mm -hmm. And 23 years, 22 years is just too long. Uh, so it's time. And uh, that's not the kind of thing you wait for it to break before you fix it. Right. Because there's a queue. You know, it's not like we can go to Walmart and buy some transformers. <laughs> uh, we have to wait in line and get them and then line up the labor because mm -hmm. it's a pretty sophisticated project if you deal with electricity. And so. Yeah, that's a project that's... So that's... We're going to release a number for the capital budget and we're immediately going to deduct the cost of transformers. Because I don't know why anybody would argue with it, but... So, there you go. You're the committee. Any questions, anybody? <laughs> You've been briefed. <laughs> you know, these things pan out, i got to say. When we look at our energy usage as a, as a municipality, it does go up because, yeah. the, you know, everything that we do now is electric. Yeah. So you would expect some of these things. But in terms of our total energy usage, the amount of diesel fuel, we, uh, heating fuel we've saved, and while the electric usage is going up, it's not spiking. It's just you know a gradual incline. So overall, we've been holding the line mm -hmm. in terms of our total energy usage as a community, which I think is an accomplishment. Um, mm -hmm. So the goal being a 20% reduction over five years. It's yeah, you're right. It, it goes up. Holding is is better than. What's happening with a lot of other communities mm -hmm. where their projects are they're getting funding, they're not holding a line at all. So in the last community I worked for, that was the case. Despite these projects we were doing and fuel reductions and electrifying mm -hmm. stuff, um, the no other numbers are growing up while the other ones are growing up. <laughs> so gotcha. uh, the holding the line is, is, is quite solid. Okay. Anyone have any questions on that? 
All right, and the generators we're still working, waiting for? Um, we plan to be doing site work here in November, but the generator will be here in the spring. Ah, okay. Roof, where are we on the roof? The roof. We may still go out to bid in the near future, but it'll be for spring work. Uh, the architects identified some issues yep. that will be addressed. And we have a funding. Town meeting has approved almost enough funds to do to meet the engineer's estimate of the roof project, including the elevator. But the way we voted it as a town, we did the main roof replacement yeah. as one capital item and the elevator roof replacement as a different capital item. We are over on one and under on the other. And our finance director plays by the rules. These are two separate projects. So I think we'll be going to fall town meeting to ask town meeting to merge the two into one project, keep the funding that's already been approved and maybe increase it by about 20 or 30,000. The engineers are always want to position themselves as having their estimate be high, have the bids come in lower. That's so I don't know what will happen if I put it out to bid as we're currently configured. By law, I'm only supposed to put things out to bid that are fully funded. So if I have an engineer's estimate that's higher than what I have mm -hmm. in the project budget, really technically I should not put that out to bid because I don't have the funds identified. I can't, can't just hope that you get a, a group of bids that come in that you can afford to buy. So <clears throat> I would we got to clean that up at town meeting, but we're also getting late in the season. Um, the decision was made to go with PVC and white PVC to reflect the sunlight and to uh, give us a little bit more useful life on the roof. Yeah. And it's just you know, getting the installers. We don't want to rush. We don't want to be out there when it gets cold, finding ourselves going below freezing when we're trying to apply a roof roofing material to the roof. So, we'll, like I say, we'll probably bid this out. I'm just waiting for Weston and Sampson to give us the final package. We'll probably still bid this out this fall and lock in the contractor, get on their schedule. Be ready this fall. Questions, anybody? So, are you saying that this is going to come to fall town meeting for extra money? Okay. And to combine both. Linda? Yeah. One. Yeah. Okay. Any questions on that? Okay. All right. The fire alarm was still waiting for the roof to be put on, right? Mm-hmm. Fire station upgrade. So we've had a lot of activity here. Weston and Sampson has agreed to provide us with the architectural services we need for the interior. We probably put up some walls, change the way the air flows inside the building to be safer. McRitchie claims they didn't understand that we want that dinosaur dragon breath furnace taken out of there. <laughs> I don't know how they missed that. It was like, you know, it's oversized. <laughs> the thermal mass on this thing is like outrageous. So we just need a more efficient modern yep. boiler system. <clears throat> so they went back to the drawing board a little bit with that. But once, now that Weston Sampson has agreed to do the architectural piece, we're proceeding, I think, next week. It's uh, John's on vacation over the weekend. It's either Tuesday or Wednesday. McRitchie, Weston and Sampson, and the town will sit down and get to a Good. conclusion on that. Not okay. a conclusion, but a bid package. Yep. Get a timeline for bid package. Anyone questions? 
Okay. APA funding, I think you're, so you're using the APA funding. A lot of this is APA funds. Yeah. Um, on the highway barn, I just, we had to remember this. Uh, the Massachusetts General Assembly gave us $25,000 in an earmark for the design services. So Gene and I are going to work the, it's a reimbursable drawdown, so we're going to, Western Sampson just started billing us for the work. So we paid a small bill. We paid like whatever, the, the initial retainer was like 1200 bucks or something. But their next invoice will score against the state grant. And we will be trying to preserve the opera funds uh, for that work or for really any other item on the ARPA list. So. Okay. Questions, anyone? We have 14 months to get our ARPA money out the door. Very good. Hopefully it works. So the one thing that's, we will, I don't want to say we'll push the boundary, but we don't have a, we have a lot less wiggle room is this water main coming up Depot Street, which is the bulk of the ARPA fund mm -hmm. that we had set aside. Um, Stantec has been retained to do the design work and will start, but they're going to finish what they're doing elsewhere in town before we launch this. Okay. We don't have to spend the money by December 31st, 2024. We have to have it obligated by a contract, and then it needs to be spent by 26, 2026. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we won't push it out that long. What's been playing in my mind is the timing of the generator project. So if we have the front lawn here opened up for the generator project, it would be an ideal time to think about the new water service coming in. So we're going to separate. Right now, our domestic and fire suppression are on one service. We need to separate those to be code compliant. So I'm trying to work this out with Adam and with Bob Sullivan. Let's have it all. Even if we just run the pipe to the street and stub it off for now, when we come up the street with the new service, we'd at least be ready to take it and not have to dig the yard up again. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a work in progress. But our idea is to minimize the total time that we have the place all dug up in out of sorts. Questions? Okay, thank you for all the input. I uh, hope some of these things move on, um, get them off our list um, so we can take on other issues if need be. All right, Matt, do you have anything to add? You're good? All right, next on the um, Agenda of minutes of July 19th and August 16th. All had a chance to read? I didn't notice any. Do I hear a motion to approve for July 19th? I make a motion to approve the July 19th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. Do I have a second? Second. Fred? Okay. Linda and Fred. Uh, any other comments? If not, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. All right, August 16th. I make a motion to approve the August 16th, 2023 meeting minutes as presented. Second. Linda and Fred. I just have one question on um, two. I'm not sure on the second line on two, environmental was here yesterday taking what he hopes is the last LET of data? Huh. To be set. Last. I'm sorry? To be set, right? Last set of data or data. Good point. Mm. Yeah? Data, yeah. data, tomato, tomato. <laughs> what he hopes is the last, and it says LET. It should be set. 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 All right. Good catch. 
Anything else? So I will redo my motion to approve the August 16th, 2023 meeting minutes as amended. Second. So Linda and Fred. Okay. Any other discussion? If not, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? So voted. And we've uh, got two meetings coming up on here, October 18th and November 15th. So I think the big question is time. I will not be present on the October 18th one. Okay, Ray. Uh, so no matter what time? Yeah, no matter what time, I'll be in, up in training out of state. Okay. Well, I can be here at 10. Do you want to keep it at 10? Yeah. That works better for you? It does. How about the mats? <laughs> yeah. There I'm here. <laughs> Just questioning. <laughs> All right. So we'll try, we'll see how it goes for one more meeting, and then maybe we'll, if it's going well, 10 a.m., we'll continue on 10 a.m. I think maybe the big question might be if we're, we want to get more people on, because I think we still have at least one, if not two, vacancies. It, would there be a possibility to move it to 9 a.m.? Like, not that I'm going to be here then, but in the future, just because so, I mean, I, I obviously have, I think we all have jobs to go to. Would 9 a.m. be easier than 10 a.m.? <laughs> I don't care either way. I don't care. <laughs> You guys can take the vote up in October after after the ten o'clock one then. So too early for you, Shirley. I'm up uh, <laughs> earlier than probably all of you. Um, Is a rooster? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> My dog comes and wakes me up, <laughs> and then we have to go for a walk, <laughs> which is good for me too. Um, of course, come winter time. Yeah. That could be, let's get the roads cleared or, or are we going to meet all? Yeah, yeah. You know, if it's anything like last year, go pick some flowers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least till February, right? <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> how about we keep it to 10 for the next meeting? See how we're doing. Sure. Is that good? Yeah, I'm not going to be here anyway, so. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> all right, as long, and I always send out a, make sure you're going to make it, because I, I, we need a quorum. And uh, all right, so the next meeting is at 10 a.m. Um, October. All right, any other issues, items not previously on here? If not, motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn at 10.35 a.m. Do I hear a second? Second. Linda and Bob. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So voted. Thank you, everybody.